Hi, everyone, and welcome to our first Oracle Cerner Health Conference and our first in-person conference since 2019. From down under, Department of Health, Victoria, Australia, you've traveled 9,000 miles and 24 hours to get here. And University Health, you've traveled two miles and five minutes to get here. <laughs> And thanks to everyone else in between for being here, and particular thanks to the thousands of you that are attending online. We really appreciate your partnership. I'm David. The title of my talk is Now is Our Time. I believe this is our collective time. We all know the last few years have been really hard, but it's been pretty amazing to see what we can do when we start to work together. And looking inward, there's been no time in Cerner's history where we have been as capable and prepared and resourced to be your partner as we are today. Let's get to Oracle in a moment. But first, imagine with me what is possible. Imagine being a patient and walking into the clinic and they actually know you. They don't ask for your insurance information. They don't give you a clipboard. They don't say what came back in your test. What did the specialist say? Imagine that the doctor caring for you looks at you the entire time you're in the office. There's no computer time, literally no computer time. Imagine you actually went to clinic because your health app said, come in. So we can understand a recent change in your health. Click here and schedule at your convenience. And don't worry, this will likely just be a preventative visit. But the reality is that isn't today. Care today is rushed, transactional, reactive, impersonal. And that's not because us clinicians went into the field to work like this. It's actually the opposite. Caregivers are heroes. And in the last few years, we've seen caregivers step up among unthinkable death and tragedy. And they've done their very best, even putting their own lives at risk, to take care of us and the communities we live in. Heroes are supposed to have tools and superpowers that help them do their job. But the tools and the technology that we're giving aren't helping, they're inhibiting. Now, I've been at Cerner for just over a year, and I've had the privilege of visiting on-site with over 200 of our clients. My visits go like this. I get to meet with the C-suite, and then I meet with the IT department, then the CNIO, the CMIO, and then the tour. Now, the tour is really nice. And all of you, and I'm privileged, I love seeing your new wing, the cancer center, the photon beam. But I have actually another desire on these tours. And so what I usually do is sneak away. And I go up to that person at the front desk in the ER that's really busy. And I say, hi, I'm David from Cerner. How do you like our tools? The feedback, <laughs> the feedback is mixed. And a lot of the issues are immediately addressable. Some of it's training, some of it's optimization, and some of it we're still working on. Later today, Travis and the team will cover this. But the biggest impression that I have after all these visits, everyone is sitting or standing in front of a computer. Very few people are tending to patients in an exam room or in a clinic. We have literally moved the exam room or the clinic to the terminal. Okay, let's take a step back. Now, we've accomplished a lot. Together, collectively, over the last 40 years, we've digitized the record. So no one here took care of a COVID patient 
in the ER or in the A&E and said, oh, we can't find this patient's chart because Dr. Smith took it home over the weekend. We fixed that part. No one recently has heard a pharmacist say, did this doctor write amiodarone or amylaride? Right? We fixed the legibility. Last year at this conference, virtually, I said that improving the EHR was the top of our list, the usability. That has not changed. We are going to build a system that is intuitive, more open, and more connected. What does more open and more connected mean? First is building it for the actual users of the system, the clinician. We're streamlining workflows across millennia. You'll hear more about that. Second is modernizing our administrative solutions. We announced Revelate last year at CHC. This year we will share our progress. And third, we're getting all the data back to you in an actual format. Thanks to Ascension, we're in the final stages of releasing Seamless Exchange. But this is just the start. On October 1, this year, we officially became part of Oracle. And now, as chairman of Oracle Health, I'm excited to share with all of you our plans. First, a little background on Oracle. Oracle is a global leader in databases, applications, and cloud infrastructure. Having developed and run applications for some of the world's most critical industries, from finance to energy, 60% of the world's credit cards transactions and over 200 million health claims are processed by Oracle every year. Oracle, as you know, is a leader in AI with thousands of researchers, data scientists, and engineers. Okay. So we have the marriage of one of the world's greatest technology companies with the global leader in the EHR space. We've digitized the record. We fixed legibility. We're going to continue to work on usability. And together, Oracle and Cerner are going to allow you to care for your patients and communities like never before. Because I believe now is our time. We're going to provide you with a cloud-enabled health platform that is intelligent, connected, and interoperable. We're going to integrate the EHR into the supply chain. We're going to integrate the EHR into human capital management and integrate the EHR into enterprise resource planning. And it will be way, way, way less expensive than what you're paying now for all those components. Remember that imagine walking into the clinic and the doctors spending all the time with you and they knew you and they imagine the proactive preventative care that your app said? That's what we're building. Imagine a nurse is giving chemo for the first time. Just-in-time training is embedded in the EHR because the human capital management system knows this nurse and is connected to the EHR. Imagine your OR schedule drives your supply chain because your supply chain management is connected to the EHR. Instead of wasted inventory, your schedule predicts what you will need. Imagine AI and video proactively notifies a nurse to help prevent falls and pressure ulcers. This platform will make use of all types of data, like social determinants of health and other outside factors like traffic or weather to drive more inclusive, actionable insights. Not only is this possible in coming together with Oracle, I would say this is our moral imperative. It is an obligation. We have the largest market share worldwide of any EHR company. And what I say to the team is that means we have more of grandma's blood sugar than anybody else. We need to keep that data secure. We need to get that blood result to the right person. And we need to make that data actionable. Understand if maybe grandma needs access to more nutritious food. To learn a bit more, I'd like to invite Mike Cecilia, who heads up Oracle's global business units to the stage for a little fireside chat. Mike and leaders uh, at Oracle have been great. They've approached 
this with incredible humil humility and passion, and I think you're going to really enjoy our few minutes together. Thanks, Mike. And uh, actually, before we get started, I want to tell you this was actually pretty hard to do because this is the time that Oracle's having its conference in Las Vegas, and Mike was in Las Vegas. He's here and going back to Las Vegas. So we appreciate uh, it's Kansas. It's great to be at a health conference. You've given me a break from the cigarette smoke in, Mega, yeah. in Las Vegas. So thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate it. So, Although there were a lot of people at the bar at the hotel last night, right, 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 which, right, which was right. a little exactly. surprised by. Right. So we'll have fun here, a different <laughs> type of fun. So we've heard a few times now. Uh, Larry Ellison has said it, you've talked about it, that healthcare has become Oracle's primary mission. What does that mean? Well, it means we've put tremendous resource, specifically tremendous engineering resource, around creating better outcomes uh, for patients and providers both. And frankly, we view that as the most important thing we've ever done in the history of the company. And we intend to uh, we intend to fulfill the promise of making the EHR and making all the systems that surround it uh, as usable as as we as we possibly can, as quickly as we possibly can, and as safely and securely as we can. As we think about this mission, we're thinking about it holistically. And I think if you look at um, or one of the things you and I have talked about rather is that you know a lot of uh, big tech, if you will, and tech companies have tried to quote fix healthcare and they've all stubbed a toe or, or, or changed their mind. And our thesis on this is that the reason that's happened is because they haven't taken on enough of the problem. They haven't tried to fix enough of the problem. They haven't tried to fix the clinical systems. They haven't tried to fix the back office systems. They haven't tried to fix the staff scheduling, HCM, payroll systems, uh, claims adjudication modules, point of care payment systems, and frankly, all of that, I think, and we think at Oracle, has been tremendously underserved by technology vendors. And the fact that we're willing to take it all on, I think, is the single biggest differentiator. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that every one of your solutions has to be an Oracle solution in order to, get, get, to generate success and to generate better outcomes for your providers, for your patients. We will build this in a way that we have an open ecosystem so that the parts can be subbed in by partners, by competitors, uh, if you'd like, as well. But unless somebody really takes on that platform, somebody really takes on the definitions of all the APIs and all the things that have to happen to finally solve the IT problem in healthcare, um, I don't think it's, uh, you know, I think there's going to be, you know, I think all the other changes are frankly just in incremental and, and not material enough to make a wholesale difference. So um, that's our vision. That's what we're focused on. You'll hear a lot more about it uh, through the week here. You'll, you'll hear more about it tomorrow in the, uh, in the keynote that's simulcast in from our, our event in Las Vegas as well. We're excited to partner with all of you and uh, certainly uh, in, in meeting with uh, several, uh, you know, several of uh, Cerner customers here in the past six months or so. It's been incredibly humbling for all of us to, uh, to really uh, engage with you on this mission to create these better outcomes and we couldn't be more excited. Well, it's fantastic, and I would add something else, is, and you just said at the end, you, you, you're, my new Oracle colleagues have been uniformly inquisitive, humble, wanting to learn, and uh, you've just provided us with amazing amounts of resources that we didn't have before. So, Mike, your role is running all the vertical businesses at Oracle, and as we've gotten to know each other, there's been times where you've given examples. I'm like, wow, that would make sense in healthcare. So can you talk a minute about... Um, the life sciences business, what you've done for payers and governments, and how you think that blends in with what we're trying to do here collectively. Well, as you know, I rarely do anything in a minute, but I'll, I'll try. Um, so, um, <laughs> so um, yeah, we've been we've been very active uh, at Oracle in in many vertical businesses for uh, for about 15 years now. We have a concept of business units that are vertically focused. Uh, some of the adjacent businesses that are relevant here are life sciences business, where we have the single biggest pharmacovigilance database in the world. So last year alone, we supplied 91% of all adverse events associated with vaccines to the United States FDA, similar, uh, similar to uh, regulators uh, throughout, throughout the world. We've been uh, in the clinical trial space um, for, again, for about uh, for 14 years now, and um, you know certainly uh, our number one or number two in the trials management space uh, worldwide. 18 of the top 20 pharmas in the world use our solutions for uh, everything from molecular discovery through trial, trial management as well. But there are lots of other industries that I think are interesting. Um, you know, one is our communications industry. So we supply infrastructure today that routes one billion um, phone calls and text messages daily. So 
if you've sent a text message today and you've used or you've made a phone call today, you have absolutely, because it's on the U.S. network, even if you're not based here in the U.S., you've used the U.S. network, you've run that over uh, our policy, our, our policy routing, uh, our diameter routing rails, which actually makes these things work and figures out uh, when you push this button that it, what you want the message to end up over here. Again, that happens over a billion times per day using critical infrastructure. Now, what does that have to do with healthcare? Well, that same critical infrastructure and that same fault-tolerant, mission-critical approach to creating highly scalable, highly secured systems will now become the underpinning of what we put underneath of Millennium, underneath of RevCycle, underneath of all these other solutions so that they have that same, you know, enjoy that same level of just, you know, the stuff never goes down, right? I mean, it's really rare that you send a text message today and that doesn't go through. That used to happen years ago, but it really doesn't happen. And even if you looked at recent events with hurricanes and things like that with, uh, with, with portable, you know, portable antennas that are launched, the stuff still just works. And that has to be the paradigm that underpins all of what we build uh, for healthcare as well. The other thing that I think is interesting there is from a 5G, from a 5G solution, there's a tremendous amount of telemetry that we can have, um, you know, both in ambulatory settings and in hospital settings that don't involve cables and, and connections and routers and things like that today. I mean, we're working with companies today that are embedding 5G chips into medical devices that will turn medical devices into portable laboratories where you as providers have extreme telemetry into either, either the patient themselves or the results of that machine without any cables in between without any, without any uh, Wi-Fi in between. It runs, over, it runs over 5G networks. So I think you're going to see a lot of 5G technology uh, turn up. Then I think one of the other more practical examples is if you've checked into one of the conference hotels here, uh, one of the, one of the uh, con hotels associated with the conference, you've used uh, the Oracle property management system. And if you have a mobile key, um, if, if you use the mobile key for your, and hopefully your checking experience went well, by the way, and hopefully everything always was good. But, um, Every one of the conference hotels that sponsored this conference are all using the Oracle mobile the Oracle application technologies. What happens when you check into a hotel? Two things. Number one, they know who you are. They know if you've stayed there before. And they know if you can pay for it, right? Basically, because your credit card, you swipe your credit card and it instantly tells them whether you have enough credit. The same thing happens at point of care in healthcare. If you go to an urgent care, you go to an emergency department, we know if the patient can pay. We don't know much, much else about them, but we know that they can actually pay. Uh, think about the experience that you have when you check into a hotel. They know how many times you've stayed there. They know if you like extra pillows, if you like something sent to your room, um, if you like to dine at the hotel or you, or you go outside. All this intelligence that's built in there, all this contextual information um, is built into the portal that the associate is greeting the guest with. And we think that same paradigm can, uh, can be applied with, uh, with patient interactions as well. So I think this stuff is amazing, and I think the audience would think, wow, this is great, and I know the next question that they all have. Okay, so how are you going to do this? What does this mean tomorrow? How are you going to bring us along? And this stuff is great with, you know, no wires, but I still got to run my operation, and we, sure. are, we got a bunch of pain points. So how are we going to bring folks along? Yes, how are we going to do all of it? Yeah. Um, so we're going to do all of it, first of all, with a heck of a lot of people, right? So we, okay. we put tremendous, you know, a tremendous amount of people with that we have uh, repurposed from other parts of Oracle from an engineering perspective into the organization to do all of it. Some of it will be transformational. Some of it will be incremental. And I think we specifically, if we take it back to the EHR, we have an incremental approach uh, on top of the on top of here that I think makes a lot of sense because what we don't want to do is put all of you in a situation to say we've got the greatest technology all that stuff that I just spoke about there it all works now it's all integrated it's all beautiful uh, it's as easy to use as ordering something from your 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 e-commerce site that you're all but there's one catch you've got to re-implement the entire system to get any value out of it. That's not, such a great, that's not such a great outcome. And I think if you look at alternatives in the market, that's exactly what you'll have to do, is to re-implement and create a data, you'll have a data migration issue. We can do all of this on top of the core systems at, um, with Cerner for one reason. They're all built on top of the Oracle data, database. And since they're built on top of the Oracle database, we can incrementally add new web user experiences on top of. As you move to the cloud, as you move to web experiences, that should be as transparent to all of you as it possibly can be. I mean, there will be a couple of new things to learn, of course. There will be a couple of new things we're going to tell you, but we don't want to put you in a situation where you have to go through this huge re-implementation to get any value. That's why we love Cerner so much. That's why we think the, the acquisition makes so much sense in this marriage of us coming together with all this great technology 
Cerner made a great choice in the database partner, by the way, with, with Oracle. Um, and um, putting together all the great clinical expertise, we can do this in a way that we do it incrementally over time. You don't have disruption. You don't have massive retraining. You don't have massive retraining issues. And you don't have a data migration issue, which is the single biggest problem in creating new systems. So that's why uh, we're so uh, thrilled to be working together. And as I said, you'll hear a lot more about it uh, through the week here as we go. Hey, Mike, we are thrilled. And thanks for your support personally and for the team here. Uh, we're really, really excited about our future together. Thank you. And, and as I said, I'll, I'll, I'll finish where I start. This is the most important thing we've ever done in the history of Oracle. We're excited to partner with all of you. We thank you for your support. Appreciate all of your patience as we go through these and your feedback uh, is, has been uh, great to date. We look forward to more of it as we go forward. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Mike. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thanks, Mike. I hope when he checks in in Vegas, the card system works when, at the hotel. Um, and thanks for being, well, we got this collective mission now, and it's pretty incredible when you think about us coming together. Okay, so let's not forget why we're here. We're here for our patients, the patients you care for, to make our friends, families, neighbors, and communities healthier. That is collectively why we're here. Uh, when we talk about our future with Oracle, it only really matters if we get there with you by supporting you. This year's theme is people, purpose, and possibility. People means you as clients, caregivers, and patients. Purpose, it is about deliver, delivering equitable, person-centered care and making it easier for caregivers to do their jobs. And possibility, now is the time. Now is the time to think big, accelerate our innovation, and work together to make healthcare more open and more connected. I'd like to now invite Travis Dalton, GM of Oracle Health, to the stage. Thanks. Thank you, David, and thank you, Mike, uh, for your leadership. It's great to hear where we're going, but it's also really good to ha hear how we're gonna get there with power and scale. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I've learned to say good day. So <laughs> to our clients and associates in over 30 countries, I think we have 16 countries represented here physically, so thank you for coming. Uh, I ran into some of our UK and Middle East clients this morning, so I hope that you know if it's morning, noon, or night, uh, because it gets pretty rough about this time. I just came back from a global trip myself, so uh, we commiserate with you. But as David said, we're in Kansas City. This is the Oracle Cerner Health Conference. We're really, really glad that you're here. Thank you to those tuned in virtually. And uh, I sincerely say thank you for being our client. We don't take that for granted. I'm Travis, EVP and GM, Oracle Health. As I stand here, I'm excited, as you can probably tell, I'm also a little nervous because I really want it to go well, because it means a lot and things that mean a lot, you want it to go well. Um, but mostly I feel an overwhelming, I would say, sense of gratitude. This is my 21st year with uh, Cerner and now Oracle Health, and this is my 18th Cerner Health Conference. So if you'll just indulge me for just a moment, how many of you have been to at least five health conferences with show of hands? Oh, that's actually not too bad. Okay. How about 10? Okay, still pretty good. 20. Has anyone been to 20? Got a few. How about 29? Boom! There's 29. So stand up, Trisha, because, yeah. Anybody that has a question, right there. That's where you're going. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> really, find her. Okay, I was reminiscing as I was uh, walking out and thinking about my first health conference. Uh, it was two weeks after I started the company, and I had like the exciting job of putting flyers on all the chairs in the auditorium in the breakout rooms. I really wish they had wearables back then because I would have absolutely nuked my uh, rings that week. Um, I didn't know much, um, but it wasn't actually an inspirational week for me because. I got to hear a lot of our clients 
and their passion for healthcare really inspired me. And so I knew I was in a great place and really I just wanted to contribute in some way. And while I'm being sentimental, earlier today, I decided to relive my earliest memories of being flyer guy, quote unquote, by putting a surprise under a few chairs. So I'm gonna ask you to look under your chair for a prize, and if you're a winner, please stand up. We can only afford five, so there's not too many out there. Did anyone win anything out here? It's like literally tucked under the chair. The joke is there's no prize. No, I'm kidding. There actually is a prize. Did anybody have, find a prize? All right, if you have this, there we go. So we've got at least one. There should be five, okay, one in each row. Okay, so what you have there are, is a uh, Oracle notebook, which is pretty cool. Make some notes. <laughs> you, you've got drink tickets, which will come in handy on Wednesday if you choose to use them to overindulge or sell. And you have an aura ring which is pretty cool. So actually, we're gonna take your aura score tomorrow at the next keynote, you're gonna tell us what it is. So we're gonna see how you're feeling. So, so thank you for that moment. I got you moving at least for a second. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for your dedication uh, to keeping your communities healthy during an extraordinary time, looking after our families and friends um, and neighbors during, during what's been an incredible time. Healthcare is personal and it always has been, we know that. That's taking on a whole new meaning for me and my wife as we're expecting a daughter in exactly five weeks. And this is, uh, this her? I feel like she looks exactly like me. <laughs> this is Camilla. So in five weeks, I'm gonna send a photo out of her for everyone to see. I'll be tired, but really happy. David and Mike touched on healthcare is permanently altered. A lot has changed. Venues of care are shifting. Client expectations and consumer expectations are changing. Macroeconomic conditions are difficult. Operating expenses are, are, are tough. Cerner has shifted from a local Kansas City-based company to a national one and the biggest EHR provider in the world. And we are now together as Oracle Health with global reach and scale. What has not changed is our commitment to listen, understand, and serve all of you. I can honestly say that I'm as excited as I've been in 21 years here, and it begs the question of why. Mike and David talked about imagining in our aspirations, and what really excites me is with our combined capabilities, we can aspire bigger than ever, but I know that we can activate and start work more quickly, and that we can execute to completion with velocity. Those three things together are critical. I remember, I remember our founder standing on the stage, holding a pen and saying, this is the most dangerous medical device in healthcare. Many of you probably remember that. It gives me goosebumps doing that. Digitizing the record has largely been accomplished. We've all worked really hard and we've done some good things. The question is, now what? As Oracle, I believe, we have the opportunity and the skills to expand the ecosystem and drive innovation with data like never before. More open and more connected on modern technology and cloud enabled. That's game changing. But you can't come to the Midwest and not talk about meat. So, <laughs> so we're not just gonna let you hear the sizzle, we're actually gonna talk about steak. Um, so that's, we're going to talk about substance, not just our aspirations. Um, so you're going to hear that from the team today. With our combined 80 years of health and technology experience, we can better deliver and what I call meet our promises and our say-do ratio. If we say it, you must do it. Clarity of aspiration, alignment of activation, and execution velocity are the force multiplier for healthcare. We're already making real progress, frankly led by all of you and enabled by us. And we're going to discuss that today and tomorrow. This is going to be a great week. It's about you. We're here to serve. 
will be candid and open, and most importantly, listen, which I'm told is a skill I need to work on, so this is a good learning opportunity for me this week. Um, so for the focus of the remainder of our session today, we're gonna discuss improving the clinical experience and some of the work that we're doing with our clients, modernizing administrative solutions to improve financial performance, and using data to advance interoperability and population health. Now, a couple, a couple key things, and then we'll move it on. I really wanna talk, have a collaborative conversation together about how do we connect your point of view into our workflow, our products, and our services? How do we get what we've done into your hands more efficiently for use? How do we improve release timing, education, and usability of our systems? We can only do that together. So moving into our first section. David has been crystal clear that our number one priority is improving the EHR. Core to fixing the EHR is improving the clinical experience. We're focused on this. We will not leave a client behind. We have released some good tools, and we have some good client examples that I think you're here. you'll hear. Dr. Nassim Afsar is our chief health officer, focused on health transformation, has a great background in care and operations, and a phenomenal team. Dr. Afsar will be laser focused on improving the clinical experience by optimizing with our existing clients, creating standard scalable capability sets, and listening, most importantly, and bringing those insights back into our future releases. So with that, I'll turn it over to Nassim. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. We all know the statistics. Many of us have felt these numbers. But unfortunately, what you see on the screen is not new. As a third year medical student, I remember an attending physician telling me about the overwhelming challenges caregivers face. Burnout has been endemic in healthcare for decades. Since then, we've seen an explosion of medical knowledge, new diagnostics and therapeutics, accountability for quality and patient experience, and new regulatory requirements. These advancements are absolutely necessary, but add to the complexity. While we've added responsibility all, all to our care teams, we haven't always equipped them with the right resources and tools. The result, more mental strain, more burnout. That's where technology comes in. If designed and leveraged appropriately, it can reduce burnout by helping care teams collaborate more efficiently, finding relevant information more quickly. Technology can and should support caregivers, just as they do for patients. Our job at Oracle Cerner is to create tools that enable you to get back to what matters most, caring for patients. To achieve that, I want to share some exciting upcoming releases in ambulatory care. The great news is these updates will be released across Millennium workflows to benefit more caregivers. Your partnership and insights have been absolutely invaluable in the design of these new features. Let's talk about improving collaboration and care through charting. Today, nurses need to dig through different parts of the chart for patient details as they prepare for each visit. Then they push those details into the workflow for the physician or the advanced care provider. If that physician needs additional information during the visit, they must go back and dig into past notes and data and pull all of that forward. Everything is saved in a different part of the record. Important information documented by one person might not be easily accessible by others in the care team. We need to make this easier. That is why we're excited to advance clinical documentation through our multidisciplinary workspace. This new collaborative workspace provides a single view and a one-team approach to patient care. It streamlines all the information for a visit into a single work stream shared by the nurse, physician, anyone else who's involved in the patient care. This workspace 
also enables side-by-side -side charting. Caregivers can look at previous notes and data right next to where their note is, collect their thoughts and document as they see and care for the patient. That's one step in the right direction. We've taken another step with our new problem summary. Inaccurate and incomplete problem lists lead to quality and safety issues, and as we all know, delays in care. For example, let's imagine a cardiologist seeing a patient for the first time. He's 58 with a history of high cholesterol, hypertension, and over time he develops coronary artery disease and requires a stent and is now in cardiac rehab. Typically, getting this view requires digging through clinical notes from various specialists over years, reviewing all other documentation and objective data to piece together what has been happening. Our new problem summary is a game changer, particularly for caregivers managing patients with chronic conditions. Now all of this information can be easily viewed. Caregivers can create a net narrative for each problem and update the story over time with details of what's been tried, what's worked, what hasn't, and how the disease has progressed, making it easy for the whole care team to follow along. Last but not least, let's talk about alert fatigue. Thanks to your feedback, we have also added a series of features and functionalities in the banner bar, which is really prime real estate. We've included more relevant information right up top, providing a level of clinical awareness of advisories, risks, and patient needs like never before. The type of information in the banner bar changes depending on the patient and the setting of care. For example, in the NICU, the new banner bar might show an infant's birth date along with their gestational age and signal to be mindful of nutritional needs and management. For an adult patient, it might signal that they have an advanced care directive. The banner bar is contextually aware because of the type of information that's displayed also changes depending on the setting of care. So for example, if a patient is at fall risk while they're hospitalized, this is not a necessary alert for the ambulatory care side. So what do all these enhancements mean? In short, caregivers get back to the purpose of care. They can spend more time with patients and deliver safer and better care while collaborating effectively with all care team members. In addition to streamlining the information, we are thinking deeply about the future of our workforce and how we can ensure thriving and sustainable careers. Some nurses left the profession, particularly during the pandemic, and new virtual care models could bring some people back. Based on a successful pilot of our virtual nurse program, we are now working with IU Health, Banner Health, Tenet Health, and UHS to expand virtual care models. In acute settings, nurses spend a great amount of time documenting. And in addition to providing bedside care. In our pilot, virtual nurses perform often time-intensive documentation using video and audio devices. Imagine how much more efficient care teams could be during admission and discharge. While the floor nurse is performing physical assessment, ad administrating medications and care, the virtual nurse can review documentation, deliver discharge education to the patient, and review pharmacy orders. We're looking forward to sharing the results of this work with you and to expand these offerings to other roles like pharmacy technicians and case managers. David mentioned Oracle Cerner's goal to be more open and more connected. Your data should enable you to innovate and enable patients to access their health data. Cerner has been a leading advocate for the free exchange of data for decades, including being a founding member of the Commonwealth Health Alliance in 2013. While I'm proud of how far we've come with interoperability, the other side of the coin 
is data abundance, which can mean information overload, especially for caregivers at the point of care. Seamless Exchange aims to solve this challenge by removing the noise, transforming and organizing the data in more meaningful ways. It goes beyond connectivity to usability. It synthesizes disparate data into a single longitudinal record while removing duplicate and incomplete fields. Think of duplicate medications, allergies, and clinical diagnoses. You know, before Seamless Exchange, I'm not sure any of us could quantify how much duplication of data existed. In a 30-year span at the Ascension's pilot site, we observed that 99% of all data is duplicated. Seamless Exchange brings in only the unique and relevant information. Oracle Cerner clients have exchanged nearly 9 billion records so far this year. Think of all the noise that we can take out of the system. By joining forces with Oracle, we will accelerate this innovation. When we talk people, purpose, and possibility, here's the possible I like to picture. A world where technology is something we don't have to think about. It seamlessly connects us to the relevant data at the right time, promoting collaboration so that we are free to focus on the purpose of healing through compassionate connections with our patients. Travis, back to you. Team. That was a much better transition than that missed hug we had the first time. <laughs> we agreed we're going to fist pump and she put her arm out and I missed it. So, <laughs> You know, as I, as I think about it, as introduced in this next section, um, another great example of the work that we're doing is with the DOD and the VA. Um, we're making great strides with the DOD and the U.S. Coast Guard. I think it's the best example of delivery at scale, frankly, in the world right now. We're more than 60% complete in our deployment, covering more than 5 million beneficiaries across 1,800 locations and 150,000 users at DOD on a single domain. That's incredible. No clapping, that's pretty amazing. I know some of them are here and thank you for being here. Additionally, we're extraordinarily proud to be partnering and working with VA there's healthcare's highest calling is to serve our nation's veterans. Veterans are at higher risk for substance abuse and mental health issues due to the nature of their service. We're working together with the DOD and the VA to combat this. An example of that is our opioid advisor that helps flag potential issues at the point of prescription. We collect and retrieve data from state PDMP and other sources. That data is connected to the EHR and checked against history and a risk score is immediately calculated. Alerts are presented to providers in the workflow to support real-time decision-making. This is already having a positive impact. This is a proactive versus reactive conversation, a very different care model than asking, are you taking anything? How are you feeling today? Or the answers are invariably, I feel great. I'm not taking anything. In May, this was recognized as a key tool for driving innovation. And this is just one example. Another is our work in behavioral health. I'm a passionate and vocal supporter of mental health awareness as a caregiver for an older sibling who has suffered for 40 decades from challenges in the health system that I know can be improved. That's my why for being here. Recently, we added the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale into the clinician workflow across our U.S. commercial and federal clients, an assessment that caregivers use to identify patients that are at risk. This has been used to screen over 2.5 million patients within this year alone. These are just a couple of additional examples of the value that we continue to add. Okay, so leading to our next section. We know that clinical systems and technology are a major expense item for you. Our goal is the goal from being a cost center to being a data aggregator and enabling operational and financial performance as a valued asset. 
with scale, we know that we can drive your operating costs down and we will do that. As we redefine the healthcare ecosystem that David and Mike discussed, the connection of the EHR to supply chain and business systems will be of events, immense value and redefine the healthcare ecosystem. Combine that with cloud and we'll be able to provide efficiency at scale that nobody else can in the industry. We're making real progress across several areas today. One example is delivering Revelate to market, which Brennan will talk about. Another clear example is the work we're doing with consumer and real-time health system command center. Bringing together data and information in an intelligent way to manage asset, assets, resources, and simplify processes. So with that, let me turn it over to Brenna Quinn, our Senior Vice President of Oracle Health Products, to discuss further. Thank you, Brenna. <laughs> Travis, it's great to be here. Um, so I, like Travis, have spent my entire career in healthcare, and I see us at an incredible inflection point. As David said, we can go beyond digitizing the paper record. We can bring technology and data together to address all aspects of how care is received, accessed, and provided. While the future opportunity is truly amazing, we know we need to continue to focus on addressing today's core challenges. When it comes to activating levers that are going to improve your bottom line that delivers for your, to, so you can meet your mission, we see organizations across the country working on several initiatives, including improving patient experiences and driving more community and consumer engagement, driving financial results, and achieving operational efficiencies. Many organizations are doing this by taking a holistic approach, really through a strategy focused on connecting their community, building brand, and creating a user-friendly digital experience for their patients. At Oracle Cerner, our offerings are designed to enable you to create that patient journey, a consumer journey, that meets your organization's specific needs for digital engagement and digital care delivery. We've been partnering with many of you to activate and advance these consumer journeys. Today, I'm honored to have one amazing partner here to join me on stage and share their story. I'd like to welcome Dr. Timothy Shu from Christiana Care up on stage. Christiana Care, <laughs> Christiana Care is headquartered in Wilmington. Hey, Dr. Shu, thanks for coming. Um, headquartered in Wilmington, Delaware, and is one of the country's most dynamic healthcare organizations. They're living in an area that I'm familiar with. We're down the road, I'm Philadelphia, he's Delaware. And I personally have become very aware of Christiana's activities and their presence in the market, as well as the values you promote and how you live by that. So Dr. Shu, let's have a seat and talk sure. a little bit about what Christiana's doing. Yeah, I thought we were just having a little intimate conversation over coffee. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bigger Surprise. than that. <laughs> Invited a few friends. Um, so, I'm, I'm aware of Christiana's really changed presence. You know, the last couple of years, it's, um, you drive down 95 and whoa, there you guys are. Um, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about who Christiana is and what you're doing? Uh, thanks, Brenda, for having me. You know, at Christiana Care, we are deeply rooted in our values of serving together with love and excellence. And I think that's probably what you see. Um, and that really means putting the patient at the center of everything that we do. Now, you can imagine that when we introduced the word love into our value statement, that created some controversy uh, within the organization. But I think when you think about love in context of all of our collective mission, missions and, and what, what, what we do, you know, love becomes evidently clear as to what that truly belongs in healthcare. I mean, love is about anticipating the needs of our patients and our communities. Love is about meeting our patients where they are and treating, treating them with courtesy and respect and empathy. Love is about providing equitable and frictional, frictionless access to care that they value. So we also live by kind of another mantra, Christiana Care, and that is that all care that can be digital will be digital, and all care that can be delivered in the home will be delivered in the home. And as you can imagine, that has really helped navigate us through some treacherous waters over the past uh, couple of years. 
But we are all in the midst of a radical transformation, of which alluded to before, from the fragmented, episodic, break-fix, uh, one-size-fits-all model of care that we have now to care that is highly personalized, proactive, person-centered, coordinated, uh, and um, continuous. You know, when you describe your um, sort of the journey, and you, you bring two concepts that to me are striking, um, and I've heard you tell this story, and it still resonates with me. When I think about um, the word love, um, and you using that as you know trying to create an identity, it kind of speaks to you know your heart clearly. Um, but then you talk about technology and enablement and you know the digital experience. And when I think about what I want for my family, um, when they need care, I want them to be treated with love, but I also want them to have the ability to get the best care through technology because I know what that power can be. And I just find it fascinating that you have taken those two concepts and really anchored your thinking on that. And um, I, as a consumer of your yes. services, I think it's terrific. So let's talk a little bit more about how you're making that transformation happen. You kind of laid out what it is, now how do we get there? Yeah, so this is really where we need to lean into technology uh, and change from both perspective as our patients um, and our care teams. Now, when you think about where we already have evolved to, you know, technology is already helping to break down the boundaries between traditional medical care and health, wellness, and lifestyle by really changing the way people think mm -hmm. about managing their health, wellness, and chronic conditions, as well as how they incorporate into their daily lives. I'll bet you everybody in this audience either has a smartwatch, a fitness tracker, or at least one mobile health app installed on their phone. <laughs> Checking if we should stand right now. Uh, but in, in, in COVID has also just absolutely catalyzed the adoption of telehealth portals and other digital health technologies. So we've made a lot of progress, but there is still tremendous in opportunity in leveraging this digital white space between visits, uh, empowering our patients to manage and control their own health, wellness, uh, and chronic conditions, connecting them to their care teams at the right time with meaningful insights, and by using omnichannel care and engagement options, uh, whatever they prefer. And it's really about leveraging technology to really build stronger connective tissue between ourselves and, and our care teams and our patients. Um, you know, we, the health systems in the room, we are under tremendous pressure. Uh, we're the incumbents in a rapidly evolving, changing, disruptive environment. And the trusted relationship that we have with patients is something we hold sacred. Um, and it's something that's a little harder to disintermediate from the healthcare supply chain. But when you think about it, is it really when you're going up against Amazon or, 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 or the likes? So we really need to lean into consumerism. Mm -hmm. Another word that elicits a lot of emotions, especially when you talk to frontline folks, they're like, this, you know, consumerism, this is healthcare. This is not why I went to medicine for. It's not your way right away. You know, healthcare is complicated. Healthcare is different. But we can't use those excuses anymore. Uh, we really have to acknowledge that our patients have very high consumer expectations. Uh, frictionless access and experience is ubiquitous as well as this blurring of the lines between physical care and digital care, or what I like to call digital uh, <laughs> experiences. So the expectations from healthcare can really be no different. Uh, delivering consumer-centric, digitally enabled, um, high value care is really requisite for our survival and growth. So at Christiana Care, you know, we're really leaning into this and new care models. Uh, we've created a center for virtual health that's powering some innovative uh, and, and ultra convenient virtual primary care and specialty care uh, practices, as well as uh, virtual care coordination and remote monitoring services. Uh, we're rapidly digitizing our core practices, you know, starting with digital patient intake and screenings to really understand our patients and understand the determinants of health so that we can then leverage our clinically integrated CRM and patient uh, engagement applications to create a more personalized uh, engagement and, and care journey. And from home as a new venue of care, we're addressing the entire continuum from primary care at home through our primary care first CMS model, all the way through um, hospital at home. You know, I think um, what you, as you went through that and you talked about that sort of 
conflict, if you will, of the word consumerism and healthcare. It does create a bit of an allergic reaction. In fact, I was in a session today where that came up again because we, we're sometimes hesitant to apply that thinking when we want to really talk about love and care and helping people. But at the end of the day, the consumers of our healthcare services, they do expect that experience that they're getting in every other industry. And so, as you said, we really do need to continue to focus on thinking consumer-centric and then treat them and give the best digital experience that you can so that they can get the best clinical outcome. So it does marry up when one pauses to think about the connection that can happen. Absolutely does. Yeah. So as you're on this journey, let me just ask you one last question. What can we as Oracle do to help? Yeah. So it's, you know, uh, healthcare is obviously in crisis. You know, we've got a overworked, overburdened, undersupplied workforce. We've got increasing costs and shrinking margins. Uh, and we've got disruption happening all around us. Uh, and for most of us, our, one of our biggest investments outside of buildings and people is our electronic health record. And so we really need our EHR to be part of the solution or the solution and not part of the problem or something to work around. So I, I'm ecstatic hearing your leadership team talking about fixing the core and fixing the experience because that is priority number one. We need to free up capacity for our care teams to do this new kind of work. Uh, we can't just continue to add things. We need to make the EHR as efficient as possible. And then we need you to help transform the core. So we need the EHR to power these new uh, continuous and asynchronous care models. And that's difficult to do with systems that are traditionally built around transactions and encounters. Uh, so the next generation EHR has to be infused with intelligence, automation, and situational and contextual awareness kind of across the entire continuum of care. And then third, we need you to amplify the core. You know, it's not just us engaging with the EHR anymore, it's our patients and our consumers. And we need a relentless focus on building out uh, these uh, comprehensive consumer-centric capabilities that really provide a seamless experience for our patients, but as well that minimizes the amount of burden uh, and um, uh, it takes for our IT teams to kind of put together fragmented mm -hmm. consumer-type solutions. Well, that's great feedback for us. And in fact, it is an area that we're committed to and we're continuing to focus on. Um, and so with that, I really want to say thank you for your time. And thank you to the entire Christiana team, who I know is working so hard to deliver on this mission and the great work you're doing for their patients. Yeah. It's great to see your progress and innovation. And thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks for having us. Today. Thanks. Appreciate it. So as we go forward as Oracle Cerner, one of the things that's really exciting is the ability to take all of the experience that Oracle has in other industries, as well as healthcare, to improve the patient experience. For example, during the pandemic, Oracle responded quickly and created a vaccination reporting system to manage health information and potential adverse events. This consumer app allowed the public to easily submit information that helped researchers monitor the effectiveness and safety of the COVID-19 vaccines. Together as Oracle, we'll take what we've learned to advance consumer health and patient engagement throughout our portfolio. This will enable us to bring more tools and partner with you so that you can drive a more meaningful patient experiences. As I mentioned earlier, we're also committed to helping you achieve high-performing financial results. And that is at the core of our clinically driven revenue cycle strategy, including Revelate. Revelate is our new patient accounting solution, if you have not heard about it. Um, it is designed to make the complex billing process less complicated, less time intensive, and more successful for your organizations for your patients, and for those unsung heroes that are working tirelessly in your billing offices. Revelate is built upon proven claim and contract management capabilities, and it integrates seamlessly with the Millennium EHR. That means you can leverage real-time clinical data to drive more accurate claim data, expected reimbursement, and financial balances that are based on regulatory and contractual requirements. With advanced automation, 
Revelate will reduce the complexity and remove repetitive tasks, like applying self-pay insurance adjustments, the things that they have to do on a regular basis that burden your billing and operations. We also know that patient accounting is critical to your business operations. That's why we're investing to ensure an easier implementation experience for our new clients and an upgrade-like experience for Millennium patient accounting clients. To that end, we've partnered with multiple clients, including BayCare, Cox Health, and Charleston Area Medical Center. BayCare is currently testing our initial Revelate release, and they're working towards a go-live event this November. Cox Health is also an early adopter who's giving us feedback and validating um, Revelate. In fact, recently, um, the patient uh, financial services director shared his excitement for how Revelate can simplify the billing process and enable them to focus on accurate and timely claim submission. This work with these partners puts us on a path to bring Revelate generally available by the end of this year, ready for clients with a new patient accounting implementation to get started. We're also developing conversion tools to upgrade Millennium patient accounting clients to Revelate. Charleston Area Medical Center is testing these tools that automate and build the, migration, the build and migration process. So for example, we're automatically extracting core data and mapping things like location and general ledger data. We're also building a capability that lets your users manage their receivables from both Revelate and Millennium patient accounting systems in a single workflow. We're committed to delivering high performing capabilities and a more predictable implementation conversion experience while we address all of your feedback. As we tackle post pandemic challenges like supply chain and workforce gaps, having the ability to understand patient care demand and the required resources and staff to meet that demand is essential. Our real-time health system teams have been actively working to advance capabilities that address this need in our products like our command center dashboard. Earlier this year, we released um, a new capability in our enterpri with enterprise-wide views of the dashboard. It allows health systems to see what's happening across their enterprise, not just one single facility. This eliminates the manual efforts associated with monitoring throughput and allows leaders to proactively match opportunity for capacity and care demands. This new capability was actually just put to the test by BayCare. It was during Hurricane Ian. As that category four storm reached land, thousands of patients had to be evacuated from hospitals across Southwest Florida. Using command centers near real-time insights, BayCare was able to identify where to move patients and it allowed them to easily report census and availability across the enterprise to effectively evacuate those patients. These type of operational advancements I'm looking forward to building upon as we come together as Oracle. Many of you are already leveraging Oracle's ERP or human capital management offerings. In the future, we'll be able to leverage your clinical EHR data to drive even more efficiencies into the systems. When we're more open and more connected, the possibilities to tr transform how you work are incredible. Our teams are excited to unlock and enable even greater value from the systems we provide to you. And so with that, I appreciate your time and I'm gonna turn it back to Travis. Great job, Brennan, thank you. The real goal for me was to actually get up here three times successfully and I've done it, so I feel good about that. <laughs> thank, thank you, Brenna. So a common theme today has been the power of data, but it's really only great when it's usable. We wanna simplify the use of data to make it more impactful. I'm excited to announce the health dashboard that is available now. The new health dashboard in Cerner Advance is a tool to help hospitals and health systems identify, evaluate, and fix issues as they arise. 
Data is aggregated from many sources, including the Lights On Network, and prioritized for areas of improvement. Each metric has comparison with the client peer set, and a new dashboard provides deeper insights to help you take action on the investment that you've already made. For example, time spent in EHR. You can now drill down by specialty and facility to see why different types of users are struggling and what you can do about it versus waiting for the dreaded ticket to show up. Adoption of dose range checking to improve safety. Now clients can see more detailed views by different medication types. This will be available free, capital F-R-E-E, -E, don't fall over in your chairs, free to, <laughs> to all clients and bring valuable insights. I've got a, someone likes free stuff, I like, probably the same person that won the prize earlier. We want to empower you, <laughs> we want to empower you with usable information to enhance what is already a significant investment that you've made with us, which we appreciate. Okay, so the last section for me, and we're heading to the home stretch. I absolutely loved it when David came on and said, our competition is not another EHR or technology provider. It's cancer, diabetes, and other chronic conditions. The only way to compete and win this battle is with data and intelligence. The right data at the right time and place We've made progress, but we know we can do better. We have collectively made real strides with better tools at our disposal. In the US, the 21st Century Cures Act has been an impetus for change. Healthy intent and other tools are contextualizing data, as you've heard. State health information exchanges are connected and viable. And the London HIE connects a city population of 9 million, which is an incredible story. Our fire-based APIs are becoming more available and prevalent in North America, most recently also in Australia and Canada. Bringing all of that together in a meaningful way with intelligence is the future of healthcare. With that, I'd like to welcome Christy Dueck, Vice President Learning Health Network, to give some examples of this in action. Go get it. So. Thank you, Travis. Being more open and more connected means bringing data inside and using it from outside your health system. We all know that clinical factors aren't the only influence on health and well being. Where you live, in terms of the country, the state, the city, even your neighborhood, can have a profound influence on that. That's why it's so important to bring into the EHR social determinants of health data. Internationally, our clients are leading the way in using social determinants of health, along with Oracle Cerner technology, to provide preventative and proactive care. So let me introduce you to one of those health systems. North Lewisham Primary Care Network in Southeast London has proactively engaged its community members to address social risk factors. They're using our data and insights platform to identify populations of risk and creating targeted intervention programs. Let me introduce you to Dr. Amina Verity so you can hear a little bit more about the positive work they're doing. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, so my name's Armina Verity, I'm a GP, I work in South London in Lewisham and I'm also the PCN lead for health inequalities. So North Lewisham is a vibrant community located in the north of the borough and I represent a primary care network which is a collaboration of nine GP surgeries working together to try and achieve population health outcomes. Our community is vibrant, we represent around 90,000 patients um, but we have significant levels of deprivation and a high level of ethnic minority residents. And along with that, we have poor health outcomes and poor uptake of health screening opportunities such as the NHS health check and cancer screening. In order to work out what was driving health inequalities locally, we performed a piece of community engagement where we contacted 32 community organisations who were working locally with the community and asked them what they thought the drivers of health inequalities were. Three key themes emerged, a lack of trust, barriers to care and the social determinants of health. So we set about working with the community to try and address these. 
we developed some innovative ways of continuing to engage with the community and allow us to co-produce initiatives and service delivery. Um, the community forum, which meets every uh, three times a year or four times a year, brings the community together with primary care network colleagues. And our community link worker, who's a local resident employed by the primary care network to act as a bridge between us and the community. We decided to develop a data strategy in collaboration with our population health team working with the CERNA platform and they helped us to identify patients that we thought were at highest risk of health inequalities and bring them in to um, have proactive um, outreach services. So we identified this population by mining the primary care data and secondary care data, looking at ethnic minority groups, people from inclusion health backgrounds, such as people experiencing homelessness, and also people who are socioeconomically deprived. We then proactively invited them for a health check by telephone using translators if needed, and of the patients that we got through to, 80% chose to come in and have a health check. The NHS health check is um, looking to pick up uh, underlying risk factors for cardiovascular disease such as high blood pressure and diabetes and of the 900 or so health checks we've done to date we have significantly higher rates of pickup compared to the national average so nationally three to five percent of health checks can find someone who's got high blood pressure whereas our health checks were finding high blood pressure in around 20 percent of cases we were finding pre-diabetes in 18% and type 2 diabetes in 3% compared to about half to 1% in a national health check program. So in summary, our approach is collaborative, it's community driven and data driven. And excitingly, the public health and ICS have decided based on the success of our program to roll this out across Lewisham. Thank you so much for having me and I hope you enjoyed listening to our approach. So as you heard, having access to localized, accurate community data within the EHR is critical for addressing social risk factors and improving community health. But we also know that this very same data can be used to address health inequity and health disparity, a primary focus of many of our US health-based systems. Take Chicago-based Common Spirit as an example. Common Spirit is just launching a program using social determinants of health to address equity in their black population, specifically focused on creating programs to reduce infant mortality risk and eliminate health inequities among black moms and their infants. Oracle Cerner's determinants of health program and product is available to help providers make community needs assessments to better underestimate the issues going on within their local populations. At the population level, you can see social risk factors like transportation barriers, food insecurity, and housing instability, all broken down by demographics. In June, we launched a new feature as well, the ability to zoom in to specific neighborhoods or groupings of up to 600 to 3,000 people to better understand and target risk. So let's take a look at Wyandotte County in eastern Kansas to understand why this zoom-in functionality makes such a difference. As you can see, the majority of that entire county is coded in red, symbolizing high risk for social risk factors like low health insurance rates, and a high prevalence of gaming and alcohol establishments. If we were just stopped there, we wouldn't have the full story. But by being able to zoom in to that specific county, we can actually see that the majority of the at-risk population is actually on the eastern border of the county. This enhanced data helps the local providers better tailor and target their intervention programs. Just like we can use social risk factors and EHR data to address community health, we can also use EHR data to accelerate clinical innovation. There's an entire side of healthcare 
that the vast majority of the population has no access to. That's the discovery side. But what if health equity included clinical research as an integrated component of clinical care? Let's talk a little bit about what's standing in the way of that. Two things, money and time. On average in the US, it takes 17 years and two and a half billion dollars to go from molecule to medicine at the bedside. That's because clinical trials are so hard, especially if you're the patient. We'll ask you to go work with caregivers outside of that trusted, established local care team. And we'll ask you to drive four to six hours away from your community, all while facing the challenges of being unwell. But what if we leveraged EHR data and offered new technologies so that all hospitals, regardless of size, location, or research experience, could participate in clinical studies and bring clean, cutting edge innovation to the patients that they serve. As part of Oracle, we are now in the unique position to do just that, to bring together life sciences companies with health systems, healthcare providers, patients, and community members to solve all of these issues. As you already heard from Mike, Oracle has a long-standing history of tech-enabling clinical trials for the world's largest pharma, biotech, and device companies using their Clinical One platform. As Oracle Cerner, what we bring to the table is all of you and the Learning Health Network, a partnership that we established with our health system clients back in 2020. Through the Learning Health Network, health systems can more easily and efficiently participate in clinical studies, gain health insights, and guide care. In the last two and a half years, we've enrolled over 100 US health systems across 43 states into the Learning Health Network, all of whom are contributing their de-identified EHR data into our real researchable, real-world data set of over 100 million patients and growing. As expected, we have some of the largest academic medical centers in the Learning Health Network who are well-versed in conducting clinical studies. But what you might not expect is that over half of our Learning Health Network members are actually critical access hospitals that rarely, if ever, have the opportunity to bring clinical studies to the rural communities that they serve. By design, diversity has become the Learning Health Network's superpower. That means that clinical trials run through the Learning Health Network have three times the national average of black and Hispanic participants. Speaking of diversity, let's take a closer look at one of those critical access hospitals. Osmond General Hospital is a 20-bed critical access hospital in rural Nebraska, serving a community of about 800 people. They joined the Learning Health Network two years ago, and last year we enrolled them on their very first clinical trial in early detection colorectal cancer. One of their community members tested positive for her at-home screening test, which meant she had to go into the hospital and get a colonoscopy, which ultimately came back with a posit positive diagnosis for colon cancer. Gratefully, she's well on her way in her treatment and recovery program, potentially years earlier into her disease. This example brings to life the major benefit of the Learning Health Network, which is that your caregivers and your patients will have better access to innovative medications, diagnostics, and devices sooner. This is about making clinical research an integrated component of clinical care 
and a viable treatment option for all. I'm excited to share about the most recent clinical trial that we've brought to our Learning Health Network members. This one in partnership with Elego Health, our partner in research activating our Learning Health Network members, and with Freenome, a biotech company who's the sponsor of the clinical trial. We're working together to help advance early detection of 10 different types of cancer in a single blood draw. Freenome, because of the Learning Health Network, is now able to enroll more diverse patients at more diverse hospitals more quickly than the traditional model. What that means for all of us is that there's actually a likelihood and a potential that we may be able to eliminate cancer for generations to come in our lifetime. Healthcare is about people helping people and the Learning Health Network is the very definition of that. A few weeks ago, Steve, an Oracle Cerner associate who I've never met before, emailed me from his chemotherapy appointment while he was reading a Freenome article and wanted to thank me for giving him renewed hope for his cancer journey. I didn't do that by myself. So I want to make sure I take a minute to extend his gratitude to all of you, and especially those of you that have joined us in the Learning Health Network journey. What I know for sure is that if we continue to work together to create collaborative shared data sets in a more open and connected way, we will indeed change the way clinical discovery works and make it 10 times faster and 10 times less costly. What that means is Steve and countless others will not only have renewed hope, but we will improve health and care in every community around the globe. So consider this your formal invitation into the Learning Health Network. In fact, consider this your call to action. Please join us on this journey and imagine what we'll be talking about next year at this time. And so with that, I'm going to invite David back up to the stage, and he's going to close us out. Great job, great job. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. Incredible stories. It's amazing what we can do when we love our communities and use data to care for them. As a physician, what makes me most excited about what we're doing is bringing clinical trials to everyone, everywhere. You heard where we're going from Mike, stating that healthcare is Oracle's new mission. Enabled by a cloud-based healthcare platform, more open and more connected. Travis shared why healthcare is personal. Nassim told us some great ways we're alleviating caregiver burnout. And Brenna highlighted how Revelate and other operational products are helping you in the post-pandemic world. Now, I encourage all of you to spend some time and see these products in action in our Solutions Gallery Center that is going to be open in just a few moments. We're advancing the EHR, and we can do so much more. It is all about people at the center of it all providing better care to patients. That's our purpose and there's no limit to what's possible. Now is our time. Thank you.